Well, Milan is out. And I can't tell you how exciting that is because this is a ridiculous amount of compute horsepower in a very small package. But what good is it if you can't break a few world records? Well, that's exactly what AMD did, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. AMD just launched Epic Milan, the 7763, 64 core monsters. They also launched the 75F3. Those are also monsters in their own right. They're only 32 cores, but they can turbo up to four gigahertz. This is kind of a big deal in server spaces. What I have here is the Gigabyte G482Z50. Also, there's the Z51. There's a couple variants of this chassis. This is the cudgel with which you can use to beat any workload senseless. Now, a lot of the time with 2U servers like we've looked at in the past, they've been optimized and specialized for a specific workload. Most recently, we took a look at the Gigabot chassis that's optimized for GPU compute. You sort of designed that you would use, you know, two, four, eight of those, a whole rack full of those, multiple racks full of those, with multiple GPUs and multiple CPUs. Yes, you can pack in 64 cores. Those Milan CPUs would work fine in that chassis just as soon as they get the BIOS update for those, uh, those configurations. It just depends on what you're doing and what kind of solution that you're architecting. Well, what if you don't know enough about your needs over five years or you have very, very stringent data processing needs? You're going to need a little bit of everything. Three and a half inch for bulk storage because, believe it or not, mechanical spinning rust still wins on you know, cost versus density, but sometimes that mechanical spinning rust can slow you down. NVMe is nice, it's very fast, it's a PCI Express interface. You can use that all day long, and also SATA and other interfaces, plus PCI Express for accelerators. That is what the Gigabyte G482 is all about. You don't have to make your decision up front. We've got three and a half inch storage. We've got two and a half inch NVMe storage. We've got two and a half inch SATA. We've got PCIe slots for days. You wanna build your own Stadia service? This would be a good start. You wanna break some world records? This would be a good start. You wanna do any kind of data analysis where you've got a huge data set on spinning rust, but you need to cache little bits of it in NVMe for hyper intense processing on a combination of CPU and GPU or a mostly CPU bound algorithm? This chassis will do it. I've got a bunch of projects lined up for this and we're gonna do a lot of really crazy stuff with this chassis because it literally does everything. So let's pop the top and take a look. Yeah, so this is pretty awesome. We've got the sticker on the inside, which shows you all about the CPU configuration and the memory lanes and that kind of stuff. When you're running a chassis like this, you wanna put at least 512 gigabytes of memory in here. Maybe a terabyte, maybe two terabytes, maybe four terabytes, because it is two dims per channel after all. You could do that. This chassis, the configuration is pretty simple. Because it's not 2U, they don't really have to do any super creative stuff to be able to support a lot of peripherals. We've got basically all PCI Express lanes from here back. They're accessible at the back as well as inaccessible ones for things like Tesla V100s. And then from here to here is our compute bay. We've got our you know, fairly beefy 280 watt supporting Milan ready uh, dual socket motherboard options. And then for the front, we've got SATA drives down here on the bottom. These are three and a half inch. Then we have two, four, six, eight. We have eight two and a half inch NVMe and two two and a half inch SATA. That's maybe for your boot operating system, something like that. We've also got a half height, half length expansion slot here. So if you wanna do front networking and have your 25 gig or your 100 gig network card in the front, you can do that. In the back, you've also got similar options. There's a half height, half length uh, card, PCI Express by 16 here. Then you've got two more X16 GPU bays. And then under here, We've got a total of eight X16 slots. I mean, you can have up to 160 PCI Express lanes with Milan. Why not put them to good use with FPGAs or GPUs? In terms of power delivery, at the midboard here, we've got two eight pin power connectors for every single GPU that's operating in this thing. <laughs> now, if you're gonna load this thing down with GPUs, you're gonna need a lot of watts, obviously, right? Well, at the rear, we have not one, not two, but three. 2200 watt power supplies. Now, here's a, here's, a, here's a pro tip for you. These power supplies are dual mode. They're 120 volts or 220 volts or 240 volts, 230 volts. If you supply these chassis with 120 volts, 
you don't get as many watts. So if you're running chassis like these, not just a gigabyte chassis, but you know any server chassis, if you can give these kinds of high density chassis 220 volts instead of 110, assuming that your power supply, you know, read the label, make sure it's supported, uh, but you'll have more wattage headroom in order to do stuff. Hey Linus, have you made sure that your servers that have these kind of power supplies are getting 220 instead of 110 because all the watts? Just checking. Sometimes even the most seasoned admins will miss little details like that, so it's always worth double checking. It also uses the uh, the fancy C20 style connection here, and then uh, you know you can use whatever your data center calls for on the other side. It could be C20. This is not necessarily 120 or 240 volts. This is just to do with the amperage. So you've got three power supplies in this chassis. Any one of them can die, and uh, you will have a total of 4,400 watts, assuming that you're using the 220, 240 volt input on this power supply for the rest of the chassis. Now our CPUs, they're 280 watt TDP, but each of our GPUs could be, you know, as high as 225 watts. So that's quite a lot of watts. There's a little fan caddy at the rear of the chassis here. This is just to help even a little bit more air flow through the case for any GPUs that you have mounted in the top. Don't worry, these fans are only two amps each. The other fans at the midboard, which there's two rows of, you know, rack mount fans here, those are up to seven amps each. So yeah, 500 watts of just cooling. Well, when this thing is running full tilt with GPUs, it's gonna be kind of loud. You got two PCI Express riser cables that uh, connect to the top slots here. But other than that, everything else on the midboard is all wired into the printed circuit board. Eight X16 slots, all the lanes. This is a single system in 4U that will basically let you upgrade any which way that you want. So take, for instance, VMware. If you wanted to run a high density VMware installation and you were using vSAN and you wanted to mix bulk storage along with flash and you didn't want to do anything over iSCSI or anything over fiber channel or anything over the network, you could have lots of three and a half inch bulk storage. You can have your NVMe for your, your Optane cache, which is always really, really recommended with VMware solutions because of the low latency of Optane. I mean, there's enough here that you could have, you know, a couple of vSAN storage groups because those will tolerate a single failure within a chassis if you configure it that way. And you still got enough physical room for your two and a half inch, you know, operating system. You can also boot off of USB or uh, micro SD card or something like that. But what my point is that you've got the flexibility here that if this was one of your like say VMware VDI nodes, you could be running grid and have all the local storage for days. You know, you've got three of these or more in a cluster. This thing is basically unstoppable. You may have seen our benchmarks for PostgreSQL, uh, dual 64 core Milan with 512 gigabytes of memory running through all the tests. Yeah, the 75F3 is faster until you get past about 200 clients, but this system supports thousands of clients with the test data set, which, I've never used a system so fast. It's, uh, you know, generation on generation, that is a substantial performance uplift. Just a few years ago, I would have never said that it was reasonable to expect that level of performance increase generation on generation as, you know, computers progress. I mean, every year computers are always gonna be faster, that's a given, but this is faster than expected, especially with mixed workloads, especially with things like, you know, a database platform. Of course, this chassis has onboard IPMI, the A-Speed 2500 that we've all come to know and love. It has its own physical wired ethernet interface. There are interfaces at the front and rear of the chassis for built-in one gigabit ethernet. I've already got this thing configured with two SFP2825 gigabit interfaces. I've also got that Dell 100 gigabit switch, which this thing is gonna connect up to. We're gonna break some world records. I've got some projects. I've partnered with Keoxia, and one of the first things we're gonna do is break the world record on IOPS in both a server chassis and a workstation chassis. This is the chassis we're gonna use to do it. There's so much going on here with this chassis that I thought it deserved, you know, basically a full tour all on its own because it is unstoppable. It is an unstoppable monster of whatever you want it to be. You know, sometimes as a computer janitor, walking in and helping somebody solve a problem, you know, you look at it and you go in and you know, the toilet's messed up, it's overflowing, there's crap everywhere. And you talk to somebody and it's like, well, your, your problem here is that you, you, you've got like a trainer potty and you really need like the Flushmaster 9000. And sometimes it's not easy uh, to convince the powers that be that the Flushmaster 9000 is really worth the price premium. 
So I really like the reconfigurability of this chassis. It's not just GPU, it's not just CPU, it's not just storage. I can mix and match a couple of different things and be able to show, yes, this chassis can solve that problem. And then once the problem is solved, once we know what we need, how much bulk storage we need, how much NVMe, maybe SATA can get the job done. Maybe we don't need the 64 core CPUs. Maybe we can deal with the lesser expensive, you know, 7713 CPUs, also 64 cores with a higher turbo than the 7763, although not as on as many cores. This is order the server now and figure out what we actually need later territory. I mean, it really is, unless you just, unless you know that you need 10 PCI Express expansion slots, full height, full length. It is worth noting that the slots on the top have enough clearance for a Tesla V100, but if you're running any kind of specialized card or an ASIC card or something like that, that is a little bit longer, you're gonna have to use the PCI Express expansion slots in the bottom of the chassis because they give you an extra 35, 40 millimeter of room over the X16 slots on the top. But you know, if you're just gonna throw a bunch of uh, Instinct cards in there or Tesla V100s or Ampere cards, uh, there's enough room for those, it's fine. With the cover off on the front, we can really see what a wizard gigabyte is with the PCIe connectivity. Because even though we've got 160 lanes to work with on the Epic Rome and Epic Milan platform, that's a lot, don't get me wrong. I mean, that's, that's a crazy amount of horsepower and PCI resources. But, you know, you don't wanna have to think about how you allocate and use that, even though you've got 192 lanes. So we've got breakout connections here and here at the front PCI Express interfaces. And that breaks out and gives us some connectivity on the NVMe side, as well as feeding the SATA connections to the SATA hard drives in a lower part of the, the front of the chassis here. A lot of careful thought, then engineering, then planning has to go into a solution like this because you can't just plug in all the lanes to the CPU. I mean, don't get me wrong, AMD's gone out of their way to provide those PCI Express lanes to make system integrators jobs a lot simpler. It's like basically you just plug your peripheral into the CPU. Do you care if it's SATA or NVMe or a PCI Express peripheral? AMD is trying to make it to where that you don't have to worry about that as much. You know, Infinity Fabric bandwidth is not infinite, <laughs> despite what they say. I mean, it could be for the future architecturally, but then if you go to use it for storage and that kind of thing, you have to sort of carefully consider how you allocate those resources. And in a monster chassis like this, where you could, you know, have all of your G PCIe lanes distributed back here for GPUs, or you could be using really fast, you know, seven, eight gigabyte per second PCI Express 4 NVMEs, potentially on some versions of this chassis, then you gotta think about how you allocate those resources. Now with some of our peripherals installed in terms of storage and memory, it's ready to power this thing on and start tackling workloads, but that, that's gonna have to wait till another video. I'm Model, this is level one. This has been a really quick tour of the Gigabyte G482Z50. Uh, be sure to check that out, or the Z51. Uh, Epic Milan and Epic Rome, two sockets up to 128 cores. I'm gonna recommend the 75F3 dual 32 core for those mixed use case workloads because they're so fast. But uh, yeah, thanks Gigabyte. This chassis is awesome. It's definitely got the level one thumbs up of approval. This is definitely the server chassis that is perfectly balanced or if you're completely indecisive and don't know what your workload is gonna be, what, what you're gonna need, it's got everything. You don't have to think about it. So ultimately, other than breaking world records, this chassis is on its way to a special project. Yes, this is, a, this is gonna be installed somewhere else, far away, and I am gonna do a video on it. We're going to take their problem, uh, solve some of the computer science behind it, programming, architecture, system, integration, that kind of thing. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, consulting stuff and put it in a video. And then this chassis is going to be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, serving a bunch of scientists that I think are going to be really happy. But that, that's gonna be a story for another day. I'm Wendell, this is Level One, and hey, if you've got a project like that you wanna talk about, come to the Level One forums, let's talk. Have your people call my people. All right, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.